Greetings, and welcome to James Bond's Jukebox, the program that explores the myth and the mystery about James Bond and pop culture in general. Today, we are pleased to give you a little bit of information on Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond. We open today uh, with... Moby's remix of the Dr. No theme, which we will be featuring a Radio 4 uh, rebroadcast of the play Dr. No later in the program. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Moby is called Moby because his name is Richard Melville Hall, and he is well-known American DJ, singer, songwriter, musician, photographer, and animal rights activist. Uh, he has the name Moby and took the name Moby because he is a direct descendant of Melville, who wrote Moby Dick. So that's a way of him shouting out to his family, Hey, I'm Moby and I'm proud of being from that tradition. Uh, the second track, Goldfinger was a Shirley Bassey song. It's the title song from the 1964 James Bond film Goldfinger, composed by John Barry with lyrics by Leslie Bricus and the famed uh, British uh, musical artist Anthony Newley. The song was performed by Shirley Bassey for the film's opening and closing title sequences. Uh interesting uh, notes about the composition. Leslie Bricus and Anthony Newley were asked to create the lyrics for the song, but when its composer, John Barry, played them the first three notes, Bricus and Newley looked at each other and sang out, Wider than a mile, to the melody of Moon River. It was a popular theme song from Breakfast and Tiffany's. Of course, John Barry was not amused. They continued to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, work on the track. One source of inspiration for the lyrics for Goldfinger was the uh, lyrics from Mac the Knife, which uh, director Guy Hamilton uh, showed to Barry, thinking it was a gritty and rough song that could be a good model for what the film required, Brie Cruz and Newley were not shown any film footage or script excerpts, but were advised of the fatal gilding suffered by the Jill Masterson character, played by Shirley Eaton. Brie Cruz would later recall that once he and Newley hit upon utilizing the Midas touch in the lyric, the pattern soon became evident and the lyrics were completed in a couple of days. Now that's referring to the opening sequences. Uh, the famous actress Shirley Eaton was poisoned by the gold paint that they had applied to her. And this was similar to another Hollywood incident in which uh, uh, Buddy Ebsen, who you will know as uh, Jed Clampett, had to uh, resign from the film The Wizard of Oz because when they tried to paint him silver, his skin could not breathe. Remember, skin is a organism and it needs air. So when they put these paints on the actors, it, it literally poisoned them. So thank you very much for Goldfinger from Shirley Bassey. And today, before... I uh, read you a few uh, facts about Ian Fleming, the ar author of all the James Bond books. I wanted to give you a little background on Toby Stevens, who will be playing uh, the part of James Bond in the radio uh, play that we will be offering later in the program. Toby, Toby Stevens... Uh, born on in 1969, is an English stage television and film actor who has appeared in films in both Hollywood and Bollywood. He is known for the roles of Bond villain 
Gustav Graves in the James Bond film Die Another Day. And he is also the son of Dame, Dame Maggie Smith, who many of you will uh, remember as the dowager uh, elder in the uh, soap opera Downton Abbey. His father was Sir Robert Stevens. He recently starred in a uh, great series called um, Black Sails. And this was, of course, a pirate adventure. It has, uh, he was playing the uh, character of James McGraw and Captain Flint. It was on the Stars Network. It's just finished, but you can buy it, and I recommend you do uh, Black Sails. He will next be appearing in Lost in Space on Netflix, which is due to come to us in 2018. He will be playing the, the patriarch of the clan, Robinson, who are lost in space. Often as I, Richard Edwin McCallum, am also often lost in space. And now, by the way, Lost in Space, one of my most favorite and cherished television programs. And now we're going to give you a few notes on Ian Fleming. Because without Ian Fleming, there would be no James Bond. And then right after that, we'll be running part one and two of the play, Dr. No. And following that, my co-producer Antoine Patrika will be adding his musical impressions to the program as he does with all Richard Edwin McCallum programs on Radio Webfray, co-produced with Antoine Patrika, executive produced by, of course, our great Joanne Michaud. So <clears throat> now let's start from VIP plaque, VIP, sorry, VIP FAQ, VIP FAQ on Ian Fleming, the author of and creator of James Bond. Who is Ian Fleming? The article begins. Ian Lancaster Fleming was born the 28th of May, 1908, and lived till the 12th of August, 1964. He was an English author, journalist, and naval intelligence officer, best known for his James Bond series of, spawn, of spy novels. Fleming came from a wealthy family connected to the merchant bank, Robert Fleming & Company. His father was the Member of Parliament for Henley from 1910 until his death on the Western Front in 1917. When is Ian Fleming's birthday? Ian Fleming was born on the 28th of May, 1908, which is a Thursday. Ian Fleming's next birthday would be in 48 days. I'm recording this on the uh, 9th of April. Ian Fleming today would be 108 years old. Uh, Ian Fleming's zodiac sign. Ian Fleming's zodiac sign was Gemini. The ruling planet of Gemini is Mercury. Therefore, lucky days for Fleming were Wednesdays, and lucky num numbers for him were 5, 14, 23, 32, and 41, and 50. Scar Scarlet and red would have been Mr. Fleming's lucky colors. Typical positive character traits of Gemini include spontaneity, brazenness, action orientation, and openness. All good things to have if you're an intelligence officer. Negative character traits would be impatience, impetuousness, foolhardiness, sel selfishness, and jealousy which, well, those could work out too in the intelligence community. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Ian Fleming was 56 years old when he died, and he died on the 12th of August, 1964, which was a Wednesday. The tragic death occurred 52 years ago. He died in Canterbury. 
Uh, he was born in Mayfair. Um, did Ian Fleming smoke cigarettes? Yes. It is no secret that many celebrities have been caught with illegal drugs in their past. Some evenly admit their drug usage. Do you think Emmy, uh, Ian Fleming did smoke cigarettes? Yes, he did. So we know that answer. Who are some uh, similar persons to Ian Fleming? S. J. L. Ak Ashmi, Murder of Sean O'Kagan, Raoul Bat, Thomas Miles, and Peter Ginner, Guinness, who is an actor, are all persons that are similar to Ian Fleming, according to this uh, little note we have on uh, this VIP fact. VIP FAQ. And now we're going to have two episodes, 15 minutes each, of the play, which is called Dr. No from Radio Rabfway, Radio Webfray.com. <laughs> 